In this lesson, we'll take a look at adding and subtracting vectors graphically. And we'll talk about adding first. To add geometric vectors, that means uh, a, a directed line segment or array drawn on paper, uh, one must remember and account for the fact that vectors are two-dimensional. Uh, they have uh, a horizontal part and a vertical part. Okay, they're actually, when we draw them on a flat surface like this, uh, that's a two-dimensional surface. There's a length and a width. Now the rule for adding vectors graphically, and there's actually two ways that I'll show, is to place the vectors head to tail. That's the method that probably the most people use. When the vectors are to be added are placed head to tail, the sum vector has its tail at the tail of the first vector added, and its head at the head of the last vector added. So we're going to do that in this example. Let's say we have these two vectors. Now remember when you redraw a vector, you have to draw it the same length, parallel, and same direction as the original. Otherwise, it's not the same vector. So I'm going to make a copy of the u vector. So there's my copy of u. And I take the, the v vector, and I'm going to put the tail of v right there, and then draw out my v vector. So there's my v vector. Now this says that the, the sum vector has its tail at the tail of the first vector. So the tail is going to be there. And its head at the head of the last vector added. So tail here head there so that is the vector u plus v and so this method actually can be used to add more than two vectors you could have three or four or five or however many vectors you just keep placing them head to tail and then the sum vector goes from the uh, tail of the first vector to the head of the last one now in example two in the second page here we're going to add some vectors and all these vectors are parallel so I'm going to start with s sorry r so there's my r vector and then I will add to it s so I'll place the tail of s right there and draw my s vector so so far I'm right out here now the p vector its tail is going to be placed right there so notice that the p vector is going to come back along the um, s vector so according to what was said in the last page the sum vector of r plus s plus p goes from the tail of the first vector to the head of the last vector so this green vector here would be the r plus s plus p vector. So in b, we're going to add b, c, and d here. So I'll make a copy of my b vector. And here's my c vector. So I'll draw it with the tail starting right there. So there's my c vector. And then the head of c is right here. So I'm going to draw, start drawing the tail of d right there. And of course, d goes in this direction. So the b plus c plus d vector goes from here and its, its head is right there. So that would be the b plus c plus d vector. In example three, we're given a, uh, a three-dimensional uh, parallelogram or a uh, rectangular prism here. And we're asked to determine each vector sum. So in A here, it says find what AB plus vector BC is. So AB would be this vector here and then BC would be that vector there. Now notice that those two vectors are placed head to tail. The head of the first vector is where the tail of the second vector starts and so that means that the sum vector goes from point A to point C. So that would be the vector AC. So AB plus BC equals AC. Now notice that when they're placed head to tail the second letter in this first vector is the same as the first letter in the next vector and so that means that they're head to tail. And so notice that if those two letters are the same, the sum vector is actually just A, C. It's actually the tail of this one, the head of this one. That's the vector A, C. So you'll notice in B here now that these vectors cannot be head to tail originally because this is an F and that's an A. So I'll start by drawing an A, F vector and we're going to add to that A, D. So there's the AD vector. Notice that they're actually placed tail to tail right now. So let's leave the AF alone. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an equivalent vector to AD over here starting at the head of the AF vector. So that vector right there, which is FG, is equivalent to AD. Those are equal vectors because they are the same length parallel and in the same direction. So I can substitute in place of AD the FG vector. And now my vectors, my two vectors are head to tail. And this is an F and this is an F. So I know uh, if I look at this vector sum, I can tell that as well. And so the vector sum, of course, would go from point A to point G, from A to G. So that's vector AG. 
In C here, notice that BF plus BC plus BA, all those vectors are actually tail to tail. So I'm going to start with the BF vector, so we'll leave BF alone. Now I want to add to that the BC vector, which is this vector here. And I want to place a vector equivalent to that starting at the tail of BF. So that vector would be equivalent to the FG vector. So I'll draw an FG vector in. So in place of the BC, we can put FG, because BC and FG are equal vectors. And then we want to add to that a BA vector. Well, I want to draw that vector so that its tail is starts here at G. So it would look like this. That would be the GH vector. So we can substitute in place the BA vector, the GH vector, because they are also equivalent. So um, head to tail, head to tail. So the sum vector would have to start at B and end at H. And so that's the vector BH. So once again, since those are the same, those letters are the same, they're all head to tail, the vector would be BH. Okay, now this is the second way to add vectors and it really boils down to the same thing as what I've done in the first few pages here. But the parallelogram law of addition looks like this. It says to add vectors using the parallelogram law, uh, you place the vectors tail to tail. So it says complete the parallelogram by placing a copy of B at the head of A and a copy of A at the head of B. So I originally had this AB, these two AB vectors, they're placed tail to tail. So I'll uh, make the parallelogram by putting another A over here and another B up here, equivalent to this one. Now, the second paragraph says the sum A plus B has its tail where the two tails of A and B meet, so that's the two tails right there, and its head where the two heads meet. The two heads, of course, are over here. So this would be the A plus B vector. And actually, if you look at the, like the top half of the diagram, Here's a head to tail A plus B. So it's the same thing. And notice that if we take a B and we place an A at the head of it, so those two are actually head to tail, then again you have A plus B. We could call it B plus A, I suppose. That's the same thing. So that's the parallelogram law of addition. And we're going to use that in the example four on this page. Uh, Joey's model airplane is trying to fly due south at 5 meters per second. So we'll draw on the diagram. There's 5 meters per second straight down representing straight south. A wind blows from the west at 2 meters per second. So we're going to place these vectors head to tail. Actually, I will use the parallelogram law. We'll actually draw a rectangle here. So there's the two vectors that we're adding. That's the 2 meters per second from the west or toward the east. We're asked, what is the resulting velocity of the model plane? Well, we're going to complete the parallelogram, so I'll draw another wind vector in there and another 5 meters per second south. So there's my parallelogram. And it goes from where the two tails meet to where the two uh, heads meet. So that's my velocity vector. Or if you didn't draw those other two vectors, we're placing these vectors head to tail. So once again, from where the tail of the first one started to the head of the last one. Now, because of the fact that this is a right angle here, we can use Pythagoras' theorem to find the length of this vector. And again, the vertical lines mean the length or magnitude. So the length of that vector would be the square root of 5 squared plus 2 squared. And 25 and 4 add to 29. So the exact value for the length of V would be the root of 29, which is approximately 5.4 meters per second. So notice that the wind has actually picked the speed up a little bit, and it's actually going at more than 5 meters per second. Now, what is the velocity? We need also a direction. We need to figure out what this angle is, or I suppose this one, to state the direction of that uh, model airplane. So I'll call this the angle theta. And so in this triangle, this is the opposite side to that angle, and this would be the adjacent. In a right angle triangle, if you know the opposite and adjacent, you can use the tan ratio. So I'm going to write the tan ratio. Tan is opposite over adjacent, so it will equal 2 over 5. Because 2 is the opposite, 5 is the adjacent. So uh, 2 fifths is uh, 0 0.4. To find the angle, then, we would take the inverse tan of 0 0.4. And that works out to be about 22 degrees. So to state the velocity, it's traveling at 5.4 meters per second, and the uh, direction would be south 22 degrees east, so 22 degrees east of straight south.